This was once Club Alabama, one of the best clubs in a Los Angeles neighborhood that was the main destination for jazz on the West Coast. It hosted an annual drag ball, and for a time it was also home to the International Sweethearts of Rhythm, an integrated all-female swing band whose openly lesbian trumpeter, Tiny Davis, once said, I was butch on the horn. I could sing it. I could swing it. This building was Joni Presents a club owned by Joan Hannon, a lesbian drummer who played in the band in Marilyn Monroe's Some Like It Hot. The bar was a space for queer people to be themselves. It hosted jazz musicians, drag competitions, and queer people of all types, some of whom, of course, played in Joni's Valley Softball League. This is the Black Cat. In 1967, it was the site of one of the first major protests against police abuse of queer people, before Stonewall. Queer places come and go, but they're a way to ground a shifting and expansive landscape of identity and artistry. My name is Wes O'Connor. As a filmmaker, the place I feel most at home in my queerness and creativity is behind the camera, and I've asked a few of my favorite musicians in LA to show me the places that make them feel the same. My name is Iwe. My band name is Polytropica. I'm Saturn Rising. My name is Rhett Madison. Hey, I'm Katie. I'm Naomi. I'm Josette. And, and we, we are... are... Ooh, Jinx. Muna. The Jinx. band Muna. Jinx. Or the band Muna. Jinx. <laughs> or Jinx. <laughs> Sorry. This is my attic room. It is very pink. Um, and the ceiling, there's clouds. My girlfriend did those. They look like boobs and butts on purpose. I feel like it's also part of, you know, thinking everything had to be a certain way and then I go really far the other way where I'm like, I really can make it anything I want. So that's how we ended up here. We are at Lechuza Beach in Malibu. Like, if you dive into a wave, you're gonna be healed of whatever weekly, daily, hourly trauma you're experiencing, you know. So we're just at my restorative place. That's where we are. Why is the Echo special to you? Like, when I look out into the audience, especially at a gig, at a place like the Echo, and I can see people really resonate with what I'm saying, especially when I talk about queer topics like in my music, it's so healing. We chose to come to Stories just because it's like kind of an epicenter of like young queer people, you know, like walking down Sunset in Echo Park. I think a lot of the stories that feed us and our little queer souls are like from books. In like I know a place we talk about like, I know a place but it may just be in my imagination. So I think a lot of it being queer is, is also just like, you know, fantasizing. If you want to go out dancing, I'm in an incredible queer scene here. I love being a part of people that have walked the same paths that I have in life. However, I think we're so much more than a queer scene because I think queer is maybe a title for maybe more um, majority communities. They look at us as queer, but I think we just look at each other as artists. My seat's overwhelmed with emotion Nothing left to do but be open my mind, I'm a prize now. But she also likes over, I'm joking. One of the most inspiring things for me, like living here, has just been like meeting queer elders and meeting people who had a history and experience of like activism in the LGBT community in this city. It really puts things in perspective for me and gives me a lot of motivation to like really center my art in that. Queer LA music, not the not the whole band, but Patty Schemmel. Oh, the shit. drummer Huge. from Hull, who's like uh, we've we've met a couple of times and had really nice yeah. uh, chats, and she's so fucking cool. Again, just being so accepted by the people here, 
it has helped me become so much more open and vulnerable and raw and honest in my lyrics and in my music in a way that I don't think I would have been able to do had I not met these people. I still rise out alive. I am everything. Don't give a fuck who the world thinks they're looking at. I'm a pin up daddy twirling in my ears with my hair slicked back. I'm your pin up darling twirling in my heels with my hair slicked back. LA is so cool in that there are a lot of young people here just trying to create more quality and space for um, femmes, people of color, and queers. And so when you have that intention and the people behind it in the big group, that's what makes it's possible for real change. You really don't find yourself kind of pigeonholed into just like the rock scene or the punk scene or the folk scene or whatever it may be. I really want all of us queer artists and artists to exist outside of the margins of genre and that the vibes are just the motherfucking vibes, <laughs> you know? We celebrate how unique and cool and different everyone is and what they have to say and what they have to create. And then when you put everyone together, then it's like unstoppable. I'm proud of LA for having such a healthy underground because for it to be so industry heavy, you wouldn't imagine that the underground is so beautiful, but it is so rich and deep and it goes back decades. And right now I'm thinking so much about the people in the 1920s in Hollywood who were underground. Who were those queer artists? You know, that's who I'm looking to right now. Being a part of the community of queers that are making music, like, it really does push you forward. And gay people are more talented. Make sure that as you are consuming queerness as a whole, that, you know, that you put action behind it, you, the people watching, that you have to be active in supporting us. That's all. <laughs> I'm